Guys, Novus here, and welcome back to From the Depths, Season 2, Episode 13. A bit salty at the moment. Um, I'm gonna have to redo a bunch of stuff that I just did. As I kind of... Uh, there's a small error made. Um, it's kind of just... It's kind of the way this game works, but most of everything will be trial and error. You just sort of got to keep trying stuff until eventually. No, I'm not being any more resistant to that at the moment. Yeah, you got to just keep trialing until you figure out what to do. So I've just lost two episodes worth of recording, or two vehicles to maybe 10k, if even worth of like wood. Or just a wooden ship that's just set up to float in the sky. Um, it's just a nail coffin. It's nothing more. And it cannot really do anything to us unless I make an error based on a false assumption. I assumed, and that's usually all you've got to work on usually in this game, how the radar would work. doesn't work the way I assumed. So trial and error has now taught me the way. Um, we're about to slap in a new radar. This thing can get scrapped. We had to scrap a few things for bringing in a couple more vehicles. Um, sorry the first time I went through this was probably much better. But that's gone. Unless I sort of... I guess keep that episode and just try and get to where we were. But we're already kind of stuck in a fight. So, essentially, I'll, I'll get into it. Sorry, I'm really on tilt right now. I'm sick of this happening. Um, God, I gotta go through and find everything instead of all again. There we go. It's just left me really, really on tilt with this. It's like annoying that there was no way to know about this ahead of time. I mean, it was technically... This would have meant a lot of time and just sort of sitting around waiting for something to chug into radar range in a standard, like in a multiplayer match that I was hosting with no one else in it. That's probably the only way I could have tested this otherwise. So it turns out, yeah, radars, they clear fog of war, but they don't. So what it does is, if I get a radar set up here, I'll be able to see what territory is whose around here does not tell you in that huge area what enemies are there. Which I assumed it was. So I thought, hey, the coast is clear. We've got like heaps of area and we had a new radar going at the same moment. And then I flew there's a bit of a cargo plane just over here and it immediately ran into a set of enemies just the tiniest bit outside of our range of sight and I'm like are you kidding me? So at this point the new ship which is currently getting built up here was too slow to actually be able to get over there before the cargo plane was going to get destroyed so we had to bring it to the destroyer. Unfortunately because the enemy had a naval unit it got stuck I guess on the land or something or just really shallow water um, for a moment and then sort of shot itself out into deep water and sank. Which meant we had to uh, sail the destroyer up close to be able to get our shots to actually travel through the water and destroy it down in the water. Problem being, the moment it got destroyed and we had to be right over here, the coffin now spawned above us. At which point it moves it close to the same speed, basically the same speed as the destroyer. Which meant it just kind of sat directly above it, continuously shot it. And I was like, you know what, I'm, no, I'm just going to start this again because that was just a series of silly events. <laughs> um, still bugs me the fleets can sail onto land because there's an air unit in there that can go over air and a land unit that can only go over land. It won't figure out which is which and sort of solve that in any way. It just kind of derps out. Um, okay, so we can retrofit this. This is something I didn't bother doing 
in the last time I recorded this episode, <laughs> but I mean I will now. Um, should be this one. Okay, so we'll retrofit that, and we'll summon in one other ship that I've started to summon in, and then we should be caught up. But <sighs> please, yeah, just. Like, I don't know, I kind of wish, to be honest, just to make it a lot easier, that this had an explanation as to what it did here. You know what I mean? There were, originally, like, when we were first getting new stuff, we'd have guides and things like this, and so you could kind of go through this and you could have a gaze and so sort of see how it works and so forth. Um, yeah, you've got all these different guides, but when it comes down to it, sort of, I don't know, even just trying to find a guide, I guess maybe there'd be something in detection somewhere. But, I don't know. As far as I'm aware, there isn't... Yeah, it's just the trial and error of sort of having to try and... Like, just having to make the mistake and pay a cost. Because there's no guide there. It's like... Probably one of the more difficult parts of this game. Um, Alright, so we're summoning in one last vehicle here. But yeah, again, yeah, sorry I'm a bit salty, it's just... God damn, it's not the first time this sort of stuff's happened. <laughs> it's like, trial and error, have found out, okay, now I get it, don't do this one simple thing. But I wasn't willing this time to pay a cost of, you know... The destroyer, which is worth 187,000 resources, and the cargo plane worth 75. It's just like, no. No way am I paying like 270,000 resources for a mistake like that. As that could pretty much end this playthrough. Alright. I mean, it could end this. Like, this particular run. Um, what we're gonna do now, it looks like this one's here. Um, yeah. So we can fly it around like we would a normal vehicle. Um, TNG, forward and backwards and so forth, using a complex controller. We've also got, um, ACBs controlling the whole thing, lifting it up and into the air. We've got a teleporter so we can get up here. I was going to put a teleporter onto, like, the fortress nearby, and we can just kind of teleport up to the radar thing, so it's, yeah, sort of makes sense. Um... Yep, so if we hit this, it stops. Everything stops. All the ACBs get turned off. Then you go to here and you hit enable, and hit test again, and yeah, green turns it on, red turns it off. It's pretty straightforward. Um, at the same time, you can actually run around and explore all the way through here. I wouldn't suggest doing that at maximum altitude. I've got to maybe change the maximum altitude down a bit. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, so you can explore, there's Heartstone extensions on the rest of respawn beacon. I just kind of wanted to put some stuff up here so it looked a bit more filled in. We've got a vehicle control so we can actually fly it around normally. Another set of control blocks to turn it all on and off. We've got some storage back here. We've even got a big old signpost over here. Um, in here we got AI, we've got all our control blocks doing all the different controls and so forth. And yeah, um, you can turn the AI on and have it do its thing. That is a lot of birds. <laughs> Sorry guys, just a horde of birds going past my window all of a sudden. So yeah, she should be right. She can chill up here. I'll have to set its altitude again. Um, There we go. Okay, so it should just chill way up there. I'm gonna sit it over there actually. That should be a good spot. Somewhere over there. Um, it turns out I can't let it get too far away. Now, this is crazy, right? Look at this. I can pick up all these fortresses, like these ground units essentially. But it turns out any mobile units, from what I can tell, 
can't be detected. There'll be units over here and here and stuff, but I know now, I guess, but I mean, it's fine. Apparently this thing's on its way over this way. I don't remember telling it to, but fair enough. Um, so once it gets into a fight, I'll probably do a quick showcase of it there. It's kind of did a bit of a quick showing of it um, earlier. I'll, I'll go over it in a minute. Um, Alright, this one. This is ready to go. Okay, so this is the fighter we went through in the showcase. And it's much quicker now. Um, its missiles are set up much better for dog fighting. Its cannons are a bit better set up. It does still need more work. I, uh, I can kind of fit a bit more in. Hang on, let me look at the place for a sec. Um, Stop moving away. Set the right side up. Okay. Alright, so basically what I could do is I could squeeze in more of these belt fed autoloaders on the corners and feed more back and I could have twice as many belt for belt fed auto loaders and um ammo clips running along back here. The uh only downside is I mean like it's already at one point oh and overclocking I don't necessarily want to take it any high because it loses too much accuracy so what I can do is then cut the number of water loaders on each side down to two instead of three and then we'd essentially have still the same number of water loaders <coughs> um, <coughs> please sir um, still not doing so well uh, I think we'd go down... No, we'd gain... We'd gain two auto loaders, I believe. No, we'd gain one auto, auto loader. Yeah, so we would have one more auto loader, but all of our ammo supplies would be doubled in this for the shell racks. So, it'd have a hell of a lot more gunfire. I'm also kind of considering setting one up for the sort of punching holes in the bigger ships and so forth, but for the moment, yeah, this is our little dogfighter. And yeah, fully functional, does its thing. Moves at almost 70 meters per second, it's not too bad. Um, bit of testing, and it works really well against other fighters. The only problem I've got at the moment is any kind of lure code I try and set up into it ends up causing it, and any other ship I try and do this with apparently at the moment. Just kind of leave, it goes up, and doesn't come back down. And <laughs> I don't know why. So, I remember having an issue with that way back when, and there was a solution, I can't remember what it was, so... If I can get that worked out, then I can have this fully programmed and ready to just start actually going out and chasing enemy fighters down, like actually sit directly behind them, slow itself down, sit on their rear end and shoot the crap out of them. So, yeah, it's a good little fighter. Pull it out of play and just sort of chill it out over there for now. So the destroyer. Where'd our wooden destroyer prototype go? I guess this is it. Did it get retrofit? One way to check. Alright. So new destroyer. Yeah, it did. Okay. Still need to break this, to be honest. The radar isn't gonna help. Um, or is it? Because that's just showed up. Unless that's because of the advanced cannon ship. It might be. Alright, so let's get into a fight and let's show these guys what for. Um, but yeah, this destroyer should be able to launch torpedoes over 10Ks. So pretty much it should be able to start shooting torpedoes from like where it is here all the way out to here. So yeah, pretty useful. Right, I'm trying to let that thing get off the land because I kind of feel a bit sad boys about whatever's coming with it. Oh no, that's a Barracuda. Whoa, that's completely different to what was over there a minute ago. Where did that come from? I'm trying to remember, but I think that was the one with all the little and bombers and stuff. Okay, alright. You get over here. Okay, I believe that's the one. So I'm going to do it in this order. 
And so what we'll do is we'll start off the fight with the fighter and we'll try and knock down some of their bombers and then we'll get into their, try and take down the barracuda itself. Um, yeah, so I think I'll have to do that in the next episode. Just because otherwise, yeah, this, I have a feeling this will go way over. So yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Um, hopefully we can get some fights done. And yeah. Hopefully finish off these deep water guards soon. Don't know where they're bringing forces from over here somewhere, but I mean, seeing their territory now, we can kind of deal with that. Alright. So that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, have a good one, guys.